All right, guys, thanks for joining us. We're uh, just finished testing the uh, all the things we were trying to do to this uh, particular upward to see how it would impact accuracy. And so here we are ready to, to share the results. So um, the process we we're taking for for this testing, we have a, uh, a Roscoe 18-inch purebred barrel. Um, we have that in a Veltor Mer upper receiver. Um, we were shooting it with um, one of our capable Sons of Liberty, um, Capable Citizen, Bolt Carrier Groups. Um, and we've got a white label armory rail. It uses a uh, aluminum barrel nut. And uh, so what we were doing um, a little while ago, we went out, we took a School of the American Rifle class, um, learned a lot in it. Um, some cool things that were taught in the class um, were the topics of uh, polishing barrel feed ramps and then um, squaring uh, receiver faces and then Loctite bedding barrels into receivers. And, you know, one of the things that we talked about there was, hey, how much of a difference does this make? Um, it's kind of hard to put a number on it. Um, and so we set about getting our own data. So before we um, were to offer these services, we wanted to see firsthand what is this doing to our guns? Is it improving? Is it is it hurting? Um, what are the results? So we built this this upper receiver. Um, we took the the best you know standard steps we could to, to to assemble it. So you know we we greased the the barrel nut here. We torqued it to to thirty foot pounds. The set screws on the gas block here um, were put on it at, at uh, twenty inch pounds with um, with rock set thread locker. Um, we inspected the feed ramps to make sure everything was good to go. Um, just normal, you know, good, good practice for assembling the gun. We took it out, we shot it, we put a Vortex, I think it's a Crossfire series, um, inexpensive 4 to 12 power scope on it. And we shot it off a, uh, less than optimal kind of piece it together yourself, plastic bench rest, um, which is better than nothing, but certainly uh, not not perfect um the majority of the testing we used a geisley g2s trigger um with a veltor a5 buffer system with an a5 h2 buffer in it um occasionally uh, earlier in the i should say just the early the first round of testing uh, i think we had that on a um, um uh, a mil spec buffer system and then it had a liberty fighting trigger in it as opposed to the to the geisley so we we're trying to keep it consistent, but we also, um, once I kind of realized that I had a better trigger sitting around, uh, decided, hey, you know, if we're really if we're really checking accuracy here, let's let's give ourselves the best possible advantage we have for for stabilizing the gun and taking as much human error as possible out of the equation. That said, I'm showing you these groups because there is human error. Um, I am not um, some world renowned bench rest shooter that shoots a perfect group every time I go out. So. While we were gathering data here, while we've got a limited amount of ammunition, we're willing to, to burn on, on chasing this information. Um, little variances in my shooting might or might not have um, an unfair impact on the recorded group sizes. So I'm showing you these targets before I'm showing you the results so you can kind of see for yourself what I saw through this process and decide how much of this you're willing to chalk up to the shooter versus how much is fair to assign to the mechanical accuracy of of, of the items here, of, of the actual hardware. So um, that's the upper so to the side. So baseline testing. Um, here we go. So here's the first two series of targets. Um, this was PMC bronze ammo. Don't look at that. This was not included in the test data. Um, we've got three other groups here. These were shot with federal gold medal match. Um, so this, da, 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 this is a 1.250 inch group. These numbers, um, I was using dial calipers for this handwritten stuff. So ignore that. Um, just got a ballistic calculator. We're going to be sharing those pictures of, of each of these groups in a, in the video here. They're going to get inserted after I'm done filming this. So just ignore these numbers, right? What I wrote in here afterwards, these are the, these are the correct values that we're used to total it up. So one and a quarter inch group, um, over here, this group, uh, 1.211 inches, up here 1.897 inches right do you do you think either this or this is possibly me um you know i think that's a fair question you know did i pull this shot 
and and throw that group way out of whack? Fair question, right? It's in the calculations though, so. All right. Uh, next series of groups. So after after we built the gun properly the first time, I ripped it apart and I polished the feed ramps on this gun. Um, the feed ramps were not all that coarse, um, but wanted to see what difference it would make. Uh, I'm going to insert some footage of what those feed ramps or pictures or whatever of what it looked before and after so you could see that. Anyway, um, we've got four groups here. These two groups were shot with the Liberty Fighting Trigger and the Mil Spec Buffer. These two groups were shot with the guys that trigger the A5H2. Um, 0.996 group size here, 1.733 group size here. You know, if we toss that out, this is a radically different group. That is a consistent, stable, you know, good group. This, I don't feel bad. I wouldn't feel bad throwing that out because if you throw that out, that's like a 0.7 inch group. Um, so, I want to show you this. I don't know that that's it's fair to blame that one on the gun, but I digress. All right, uh, 1.223 inches here, 1.731 here. This is the one when I was on the range. I felt that one. I saw crosshairs. Uh, I saw I saw white inside of the crosshairs off of the circle before that shot broke. So I feel really comfortable dumping that one, but. I mean, these, hey, whatever, right? It's all totaled in 1.73 inches for the group size here. So this is what's after the feed ramps were polished. Um, after that was done, we took it apart. Now, the this this barrel and that receiver were very loose. It was very sloppy. Um, we got this receiver used. Um, you know, it had been assembled before. I don't know if it had been dropped or something, you know. Who knows what happened, right? But um, point being, uh, when, when I put the barrel into it, I knew it was loose. I mean, I'm going to show you some footage of that. You can see for yourself. Um, front's a little scuffed up. Um, this has the loosest fit of any of the of receivers that are going to be used here, um, but it's also one of the stiffest. Um, but this thing is probably going to benefit from some Loctite. But I could feel high spots on it too. You could see it. And so we squared the face of the upper receiver, uh, and then we used Loctite 620, and we bedded the barrel into the upper receiver, and then we shot it again. So... Here's one of those groups, 0 0.708 inches. Now, so far in all these groups, the scope never came off. Right? It stayed it stayed mounted true to the uh, upper receiver. We never had to take it off. 1.64 inches, 1.205 inches. Right? Not bad groups, but, you know, am I responsible for some of this? I think I am. Uh, so after that was done... We had all this data. I took the gun apart. Uh, the scope came off of it, um, and uh, I pinned the gas block. So we drilled through the um, the gas block here um, with a 332nd inch um, diameter steel coil pin. Um, we were using the 332nd to try and displace less material. Still a lot more security than a couple of set screws, but wanted to see, okay, through a 750 diameter gas journal, on a stainless barrel, you know, heavier, you know, traditional full profile, I guess you, you could say, you know, how much, if any negative impact did pinning a gas block have an accuracy? A lot of people talk about it, not a whole lot of people put numbers to it. So here we go. Gun, gun went back out. The scope went back on. Um, all of these groups shifted. I didn't adjust the scope once I started shooting. Um, I just wanted to get the shooting done. So here's this group. Four rounds are like touching. And then we've got a flyer, 1.345 inches. Yep. Um, this is like two different groups. Uh, kind of weird. 1.450 inches. Yep. And the last, the last ones. This one, part of me thinks that one of these was a double. Because um, I remember shooting five on this. It might be this one. I'm not sure. Um, when I did the ballistics calculations, I just counted it as, as four rounds, whatever. Average is still the same. It's averaging over four, 1.034 inches. Um, this one, I really feel like that's me, but 1.602 inches, right? So um, with, you know, all of these calculations here are inclusive of all the rounds. But look, um, I feel like some of these chalking them up to me is is probably a, a fair thing 
nonetheless, um, you know, to, to be selective about what we're throwing out and what we're not isn't really the spirit of this. This is one upper. This is one time through this procedure. It's one type of ammo. Um, it's one scope. It's one bench rest. It's one shooter. It's one trigger. You know, two triggers in this case. Anyway, you get the point. Um, this isn't definitive proof of one thing or another. It's just information. So let's hold this up a little closer to the camera. So um, here's the averages. So we had three averages. Um, the, the fourth group was with the, the full metal jacket ammo. Uh, baseline, we got 1.45 inches. Um, we polished up the feed ramps, 1.42. Basically the same, right? No, no real change. But, you know, after we squared the receiver face, um, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good reduction. Um, that, that's a measurable, noticeable reduction in group sizes. Um, again, you know, there's some flyers that were in there. And if, if you toss out some of those, these numbers might look a little different. And then after we pinned the gas block, you know, we did measure a little bit of a difference where the groups opened up. So this is, uh, these are the group sizes after, um, after the gas block was pinned. And, you know, here's, uh, here's group sizes, um, before it was pinned. So, I don't want to get all this in, in, in one shot, but, uh, I don't know that that's going to happen. Um, you know, uh, maybe, maybe there's, they seem a little, uh, they seem a little more open. Um, they don't seem as consistent. Maybe, maybe, maybe it is fair to say that about the, um, about the pin gas block here. But what I will say is that, um, you know, 0.18 inches at worst probably isn't going to make or break anybody's, um, decision anybody's uh um you know it, it's not that big of a deal like if you're if you're if you are not shooting with a 10 power scope um you know you're not competing for money on on accuracy alone and the sense of mind that a pin gas block gives you it could very well be worth it for you so um did feed ramp polishing matter? Yeah, not so much. Um, I think same thing, you know, maybe a peace of mind thing. Um, I think there, you know, there are some barrels that uh, you might see some defects in, you know, whether it's a legitimate burr or it's just super kind of grabby and toothy. Um, or, and maybe, you know, you feel more comfortable about, uh, you know, investing in that service, but um, didn't really see... Uh, any significant difference, but we also, you know, it also didn't hurt, right? Um, but I think it's fair to say that betting the barrel, <coughs> excuse me, that betting the barrel and into a square receiver face did, um, did absolutely make a difference in, in the group size. Um, I think that was that was pretty visible. What we did see is that the groups uh, lifted up when we squared the receiver because the, um, the the top edge of the face was where it was the most proud. So as that got ground down, uh, the barrel lifted up a little bit, and thus you know your, your your point of impact was elevated as a result. So so this is one um, one upper receiver, one type of ammunition. Um, this isn't uh, the end of the world, but uh, we wanted to put our hands on some data, um, and be able to start justifying why we might make a recommendation or advocate for or against, um, you know, doing something here. So there you have it. Um, this is pretty much the, the procedure that we're going to follow on some other upper receivers. Um, it's a time and money thing to, to get out and do this stuff. Um, neither of which we have a ton of right now. That said, we're going to repeat this on a couple of other barrels, a couple of other uppers, and um, continue to take a look at these numbers and, and see kind of what what happens. If, if we notice a consistent trend um, of, <coughs> of gas blocks after they're pinned, if those really open up the group size, then okay, cool, let's put a number on it. Is it 
two tenths of an inch? Is it one tenth of an inch? Is it, you know, less relevant on shorter barrels? Is it more relevant on stainless barrels than, you know, than 4150 barrels or something? Let's, let's try and figure out the pattern. So, um, that's what we're after. Um, yeah, sorry for being long winded, but there's, there's kind of, uh, there's a lot of information to present here and this is, this is all essentially anecdotal you know, sample of one so far. So, um, hope you guys are enjoying it. If you are enjoying it, let us know. Uh, maybe it'll help keep us motivated to go through all this effort more than once. Um, but yeah, um, there you go. So, uh, until next time, uh, yeah, keep at it. Thanks.